and welcome back to another video in the series of tutorials for the Roland Aerophone Go. And we're going to look at some of the settings in the Roland Aerophone Go Plus app. It's a free download from your app store. Now, before we carry on with the video, I should make it clear that the, the Aerophone Go is brilliant for taking out of the box, putting the batteries in, playing straight off the bat. It's great fun. And most people will enjoy that, I'm sure, for the first few weeks of, of playing the instrument. But you're soon going to want to get a little bit further into some of the settings and customizations that you can make. You might want to be able to start connecting to other equipment like your computer, and we've looked at various connections uh, in earlier videos, but what I want to show you is some of the settings here that I use uh, to, to set up the best for my own playing. I get quite a lot of inquiries of people saying, oh, how do you make this instrument sound like that? Well, a lot of it is going to be here in what I'm going to show you. So keep watching to the end because I hope there'll be some really useful information for you here. Let's get into it. On the main page on the Aerophone Go Plus app, when you get connected, of course, by Bluetooth, um, then uh, you've got this settings here at, at the top four main areas. Underneath, we've got this really useful metronome app, which is useful for your practice. But we've got the four areas, system, fingering, MIDI and control. We're going to take each one of these individually. I'm not going to do a huge amount of detail on each one. I just want to show you some of the most important settings that maybe it would be good to be aware of. So in, in the system setting here, this is information about the instrument in general. So things like the uh, battery level, which is really useful to know. You can check exactly what your battery level is there. And it'll also tell you here if you uh, need to do an update. Uh, usually if you turn on this app, by the way, and there is an update, it'll automatically come up and tell you. But if you want to check, you just click on the update here and it'll tell you whether you need an update to the instrument. Roland do occasionally produce updates and these are really useful for adding new features and, and, and new controls. And this is just a list of the most recent changes that they've made. I'm going to go back to that screen now. There's a, a way of tuning the whole instrument. So, for instance, if you were playing maybe in a cold church or something with a piano that isn't at concert pitch, you can change the, the pitch here. And by the way, any of these settings that you need to change, you just touch on the orange sign, the orange number, and then you can adjust it here in the list of options. So I'm just going to close that back at the bottom of the screen. I can change the whole octave uh, shift of the instrument if I want to. I don't find I need to do that very often. And there's a really useful feature that can automatically turn the aerophone off. If you should put it down and forget to turn it off, you don't want to come back to the instrument. The batteries run out. So this is really useful. I have this set on 30 minutes. And um, if I left it on the table without turning it off, uh, it would automatically shut down for me after 30 minutes. Uh, the battery life in this, by the way, has been absolutely amazing. Um, I can't even remember the last time I put batteries in it. It's really very, very good. You can choose whether the internal speaker is on or off and um, you can even back up your settings there if you want to. But generally that's the, the system page. The one other thing you might want to do occasionally is if you want to do a reset, sometimes you might get a gremlin or something doesn't feel like it's working like it should be doing. There might be some change there that wasn't happening or something, then, then you can do a, a whole reset of the instrument. By the way, don't be afraid to do that. I've done it a few times on, on the Aerophone and um, it's very easy to get the system set back up again within, within a few seconds as to, as to how you want it. So that's the system page. Now let's have a look at the fingering mode page. 
Now this is really interesting on the Aerophone Go and also on the Aerophone 10. Um, Roland have been very thoughtful here to include some different fingering modes. So as a saxophone player, you're probably going to just pick the sax fingering there. Uh, but there is also a recorder fingering mode. Um, I was in Germany just recently with a, a professional recorder player that had a go on the Aerophone. We switched it to recorder fingering mode and he seemed to be very quickly at home uh, with, with that mode straight away. You can uh, have the electronic wind uh, instrument mode. Um, I personally haven't used this so much, but I, I know a lot of people do. Um, this actually allows a tremendous amount of alternative fingering. So if you really want to dig deep and, and get into that, there are some real um, advantages there with, with the uh, electronic wind instrument mode. There's even a trumpet fingering mode where you can use the right hand three keys just like three valves. And then I think most thoughtfully, there are options here to play the whole instrument range with just the left hand or just the right hand. Now, I think this is perhaps uh, useful, perhaps if someone's got a, an injury or a, a handicap of some sort, you'll be able to play the whole range of this instrument with just one hand, which I think is, is, is really helpful. And um, you can even set some of your own fingerings here if you want to as well. So if you've got a special fingering or you just even want to kind of invent a fingering at a certain point that, that you think might be really useful, you, you can set it on this as well. And by the way, if you tap on open fingering chart, very usefully there, there's all the fingering charts for all the different modes for you to check out. So very, very handy uh, and quick to get on with there. So that's the fingering page. Now, possibly uh, the, the, the most complicated page of, of the settings here uh, is the MIDI page. Now, um, for many people, I, I imagine that this might be an area that, that, that a lot of people won't really bother about too much. It's most useful for setting the instrument up to react with external instruments. Now, as you know, the Aerophone Go Plus app comes with 50 additional sounds, which is which is fantastic. Um, but there are a tremendous amount of apps out there that also um, can be run on the iPad or the iPhone. And uh, particularly with, with synthesizer sounds uh, uh, and, in fact, other instrumental sounds, there are some amazing sounds out there, and I highly recommend you go and look out for some of those. I will look at a video and, and show you some of the ones that I'm using on that. Um, so the MIDI page could be something that you'll want to look into a little bit deeper. I'll just give you a brief look here. So we're going to the MIDI page and some of this um, stuff uh, relies or, or is to do with how we uh, communicate with between the Aerophone Go and say either the computer or some other iPad sounds. And um, it's, it comes preset to work best for the internal sounds uh, of the Aerophone and also the sounds on the um, app itself. And there's one main setting that, that I need to make you aware of here, because it's something that could save you a huge amount of time if you do look at connecting to other apps. Now, the one we're looking at here is a breath MIDI out parameter. You'll see at the default here, it's set for uh, CC2 and CC2. 11 on the second parameter. Now, uh, the, CC, the CC2 is, is the parameter which will be uh, the general accepted uh, parameter for breath control. So that means as I blow harder, then the sound is going to go louder. And 
generally that's what we want to happen. Um, now on some apps, if you have both the CC2 and the CC11 switched on, some of the, some of the sounds might be getting a little bit confused. So what some apps will prefer the CC11 and some apps will prefer the CC02. Um, if, you've, if you've got anything where you've got a sound that's been specially written to be working with a wind synthesizer, then I'd suggest you probably turn off the CC11 setting. So touch on the orange, you can scroll to off. Touch on that and close, okay? Um, so that's the main one to remember here, I think, that, that, that you might want to adjust if you're going to connect to some external uh, sound sources. But as you can see, there's a vast array of settings here to do with the breath pressure, to do with the bike control on the instrument. And the other one I want to show you is right at the bottom here, the velocity uh, setting. Now, the default, I believe, uh, is, is to set it at, at a standard 100 watts velocity. We ought to try and make that clear. Velocity is the first signal that the aerophone sends out to say how hard you, you started the sound, a sort of initial attack, you might say. After that point is when the CCO2 kicks in and controls the, the volume level of the duration of the note. But this velocity is, is about the attack. Now, if you think about it, there are different instruments that use attack in a different way. So for instance, a violin, we might want to make the attack very slow and gentle to begin with, uh, and then maybe increase. Um, there are some sounds though, like particularly percussive sounds, that by the way would include piano, and it would include a uh, guitar, where um, the initial attack actually becomes more important. And if you want to get the very best out of some of those sounds, you might be better to scroll right to the top and select variable. I find that on some of the internal sounds on the app, for instance, um, the bass sound, you get a lot more variation in the character of the sound if you select variable uh, velocity. So those two are the main settings. Check out that, uh, that breath control. There's a CC2 and a CC11, uh, I beg your pardon, 11. Um, they're, they're two to be careful of and also the velocity control. If you want to dig deeper, there's a tremendous amount of stuff there, including what the, the little thumb button does on the back here. You can change the, um, the control of that as well. Uh, so really fantastic to get into those settings, but they're the main ones I think you should be aware of. And finally, we're gonna look at the control section. Um, now, this is really about um, the, the controls of the sort of instrument itself, it's sort of how the key, uh, the key work uh, works. And um, some of this stuff could be useful if, if you um, want to make a change to it. Uh, some saxophones are even different, the, the way that the little finger keys work and, and, and things. So there might be some things here that you'd like to, to try out. Um, the, uh, the, the disable key, we can actually take out uh, any one of the keys. By that, I don't mean remove it, I mean disable it. And um, I've had this be quite useful sometimes if, if particularly perhaps a small child or again, someone with a difficulty in one of their hands, perhaps you find you're catching a key by mistake. You can actually tap on any one of those keys and, um, and disable it. So you'll see on the app here, if I press, say, this top side key here, uh, that one is actually being disabled now. So if you press it by mistake, uh, then it, it won't react to anything. And we can reset back to normal again. 
and then there's also a setting here for key delay. People get a little bit confused with this. Um, if you are a beginner, you might want to set the key delay a little bit higher, uh, at least to, until you get used to it. What key delay does is it, it changes the speed of the response of the keys. This can be useful, particularly with the octave key. Uh, some people find it a little bit difficult to, to, to operate that smoothly to begin with. If you're getting glitches where you're getting octaves shooting up and down, it might be worth checking out the key delay. And also the octave key here, you can change how that is working, um, either as a general, just a saxophone octave key, in which case just the octave key up will work uh, and the octave key down is, is, is disabled effectively, or you can have it uh, that both octave keys work. So again, really good if you want to, if you're finding some things a little bit awkward when you, when you first switch on and you're finding it tricky to navigate around the keys really neatly, some of these settings are useful just to tweak until you get used to the instrument. Uh, the table key cu coupler is, is to do with the little fingering, uh, the little finger uh, um, keys down here. Um, I'd suggest you leave that as it is, but if you want to, you can change that uh, to adjust any note by a semitone lower or a semitone higher. So, by the way, each one of these has a little I for information next to the setting. So if you want a description of what that actually does, just click on the little I next to it and um, up comes the, the manual, if you like, for that specific setting. Really, really useful. And there it explains to you that the, um, the two of the keys will sharp a note or ink, um, raise the note by a semitone and uh, the other two will lower the note by a semitone. Uh, breath adjust is something that, again, I tend to find is very, very good on uh, auto on this instrument, but you can change it. This is how hard do you blow until a sound starts to come out? If you think about it on a, on a saxophone, uh, you don't get a, a, a sound with, with absolutely tiny amounts of air going through. You need a little bit of pressure before the reed starts to vibrate. So this simulates that idea as well. Uh, and there are other settings for breath. The most useful one for me here is this breath curve. So if I switch this to L2, as I play a sound now, even with uh, a small amount of air, I get a loud sound. If I try and play really quietly, it's not much difference if I play loud. That's because L2 means that even with a small amount of air, you get basically the full velocity. Now, if I turn it to H2, this is right at the other end of the the setting. Now, if I blow quite gently, you can get a really, really quiet attack. But if I want to play loud, I've got to blow a lot of air through to get a loud sound. I find it's a bit too much. For me, that setting is just about right on M which is medium, and um, you should try it. Certainly for me, don't have it set on uh, L2. I feel you're gonna lose all the dynamic contrast, and that's such a shame because that's what the Aerophone is so good at, the dynamic range control. And you can also set the, the bite control as well. Now, this is something that, um, Briefly, just to explain, uh, if, if the bite control is, um, is how much lip pressure might change the pitch of the note. We've talked about this in other videos. And you can completely turn that off if you want to in this setting here on the instrument. You can just 
switch this switch here, turn it off. So if you're finding the pitch is a bit all over the place, just turn it off to begin with until you get used to it. But here you can get quite a lot more detail and you can basically set it up uh, to have um, more lip movement before the sound actually starts to uh, move at all. And quite recently, uh, Roland introduced this setting. Uh, this is the the bite pitch control. Now, I find there's a little bit of um, sort of disagreement about this, and it feels to me that um, saxophone players, uh, which I am, um, I prefer the saxophone setup uh, for the aerophone. Uh, some people are, are, are sort of saying, oh, well, the pitch won't go up, it'll only go down. Um, as a saxophone player, um, I only ever take pitch downwards. If I want to take pitch upwards, I'll generally use the thumb to, 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 to control that for me. Um, so what this does is on the saxophone setting, it should feel pretty much like a saxophone. When you release your lip, uh, when you slacken your embouchure, the pitch will go down and we can get vibrato very easily. So I feel it works really well on the Aerophone Go. Now, if we change it to electronic wind or e-wind as they're calling it here, now, what this does is we really lose the ability to change the, the, the pitch. Um, and I think the idea is then that you would change the pitch on the thumb lever here. So now if I press the thumb as I'm playing a note, you can you see that that's uh, changing the pitch down. And now my lip uh, just deals with vibrato. Um, so, so uh, the, the, the vibrato perhaps might feel a bit more natural to some people in, in that way. Of course, um, on some sounds, there's a vibrato kind of built in anyway. Um, so it, it, again, it's a personal taste sort of thing. For me, I stick with the saxophone uh, setting, but there is this E wind setting there if you want it to. Uh, and a, a couple of other small deviations in how much the pitch goes up or goes down on, on those settings there. So that's it. It's a really fantastic uh, app to, if you really want to get into the, the, the deepest settings, you can do everything actually on this that you can do pretty much on the, on the Big Brother, the AE10. Um, but those few that I've highlighted, I think might be useful for you to have a look at to get the best out of the instrument for you. As usual, if you've got any questions, uh, let me uh, have a comment down uh, below. Um, I'll try to get to uh, back to most of them if I can. Um, please subscribe to the channel, it makes a huge difference to me and thank you if you've already subscribed. I hope you'll continue to enjoy the videos and uh, we should be getting uh, a few more videos coming a little bit more quickly again now. The next one, as I said, will be on this player app, uh, which is how you can play along with backing tracks um, from the app itself. So thank you for watching again. See you in the next one.